Hi guys, welcome to my next top three and today we're going to talk about the top three tips to get a flat tummy and this is by request. So listen up. First of all, have you ever heard the term abs are made in the kitchen and not the gym? Well, it's absolutely true. And there are a couple of reasons for this. First of all, if you have a layer of fat over top of those abdominal muscles, you're not going to see them. Secondly, any food that aids in bloating will actually keep you from having that flat tummy as well. So some foods that you need to watch out for would be soda or any drink with carbonation immediately will add to bloating. Um, so we need to eliminate those out of your diet altogether. Uh, limiting or eliminating alcohol, same thing, aids in bloating. Uh, gluten can be kind of a fad item where people cut it out of their diet even if they're not allergic or have celiac disease. I'm not in favor of completely eliminating it, but I definitely am in favor of limiting it and picking the right types of carbs and uh, things with gluten in them. So your whole wheat pastas and your whole wheat um, breads and stuff like that are the way to go. Um, still be careful though, be, even though they're whole wheat, they can have added sugar and uh, preservatives and other things that, can, uh, that aren't good for us. So watch out for that. Choose your carbs wisely. A uh, brown, brown rice or a sweet potato is definitely the better option. Um, and go with something more on the lower in gluten if you can, just because it does tend to bloat people up, even if you're not allergic. Uh, so then another item would be dairy. Uh, some people are allergic to dairy or intolerant to dairy, but even those without any serious issues with dairy can sometimes feel bloated after you have uh, ice cream or milk or even cheese and yogurt. So watch out for those little triggers and you'll start to learn as you clean up your diet, you'll notice more and more, wow, that certain item actually does make me feel a little bit bloated and start limiting it. I go with an almond milk instead of a dairy milk um, and limit my cheese a lot now and uh, definitely the only other dairy that I have is my Greek yogurt because I love it. So that's a big key right there. Um, just watch out for your sugars. You definitely want to limit anything that is a processed sugar, refined sugar. Uh, go with um, natural sweeteners whenever you can or exclusively work your way into doing that because uh, they definitely don't spike your blood sugar quite as dramatically and drop it again and uh, learn to pair your sugars with your proteins and fiber so that you have that nice gentle rise in blood sugar and lowering instead of spiking and falling. Um, these, all these things help, so um, take those into consideration. Your second tip has to do with cardio. Um, cardio, while you are doing it, it is basically firing up your body to burn fat uh, like a machine almost as you're doing it. So it's definitely important to incorporate into your week four to five days a week of at least 30 minutes of cardio where you're getting your heart rate really elevated and you're noticing your breath is coming a little bit harder. Uh, not so much that you're threatening to um, hyperventilate or get your heart rate so high that you're going to pass out. You want to be able to talk in short sentences during this time. That's basically your key that you're on track uh, for intensity. Not so much that you can really carry on a full-on conversation with somebody beside you chatting about the gossip, but that you're really working pretty hard during that time. Uh, moving on to uh, resistance exercise or your actual abdominal exercises, um, if you can weight lift and move some resistance training around and get it into your program, you're going to burn... Uh, your metabolism itself burns higher for up to 24 to 48 hours after lifting weights. So as opposed to cardio where it just burns while you're doing it, this can continue that fat burn. So it's so important to get a weightlifting routine together. In that, you want to incorporate your abdominal exercises. Do your crunches, uh, even sit-ups if you want. I'm going to show you a couple of extras in there. But did you know that you have more than just one set of of muscles that make up your abdominals. It's not just that six pack or the erectus abdominis that's here, but you've got internal obliques and external obliques, and you've got a transverse abdominis that comes all the way from your back and wraps around to your front. All of these muscles work together to hold you, your posture up and hold your organs in. 
Um, one good exercise for the transverse abdominis. Now this works anytime that you're supporting weight and holding your posture, but you can work it directly by pulling your belly button in like you're gonna try to touch your spine. Now you're not really gonna make that happen, but when you pull in like that really, really tight and hold it for like 10 seconds, you're creating a flex there. And then after 10 seconds you release and that is one rep. You can do 10 of those to start with and then just start working up, holding it longer and doing more repetitions. This is gonna immediately give that um, illusion of actually a flatter tummy because you're holding everything in tighter and your posture is better. Okay, so it's an illusion, but hey, it doesn't, doesn't it count anyway? Absolutely. So work on that, it immediately gives that tummy suck in. <laughs> so the next one we can talk about is those obliques. Now even though there are two sets that crisscross on the side, they're both worked by the same exercises. So a couple of great ones, uh, if you get into a plank position like this, that in itself is a good exercise for your obliques. But as you get comfortable, you can begin to pulse that up and down. Always making sure to do both sides. And you can also kind of do this from the knees if you're a beginner. And again, you can pulse that up and down. Now while you're in this position, here's your next one. Come down a little bit and lay that hand, that bottom hand straight out for support. Bend the knees, hand behind the head just for support. We're not gonna pull on our head. There's no need to do that. And then just lift the knees and the shoulders at the same time. And there you go, you got a nice side crunch. Always doing both sides. Okay, now a couple of good ones for the lower part of your abdominals because even though they're one big muscle that are kind of attached there, you do tend to target either upper or lower depending on what exercise you're doing. So in order to target that lower part where you kind of don't get all the time, there's two different exercises. I'm gonna do them right back to back so you can see. And the first one's called the jackknife. Hands come straight out, to, legs are straight out, and you come up and touch. The lower that your legs go without touching the floor, the harder that it is. If I only come down a little bit, I'm making it easier. And if I bend my knees, I'm making that easier. The other one, if you can grab onto something up over your head and just move the legs, that's called a reverse crunch. And you can even give it a little butt boost up in the air. <laughs> and it makes it a little bit more difficult. So those are your ab exercises, uh, your cardio outline, and your dietary outline for a flat tummy. And just keep in mind, it's a process. You're gonna learn as you go along. Give it your very best to incorporate these things a little bit at a time. And keep in mind, even those that are in the best of shape, if you've had kids, if you've had major weight loss, or if you are a little bit older, you may always have a little extra skin there. I do, <laughs> believe me, I do. So always be confident and comfortable in yourself. Give it your all. It's all about being the best version of you when it's all said and done. And if you're giving it your all and you're looking the best that you can be, then you should be pretty damn proud of yourself. Thanks guys, and join me next week for your next top three.